Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 135 for Monday, October 9th, 2017. Greetings, folks, and welcome. Welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Las Gatas, California, it's Paul Kent. You know what? I just realized, Paul, because we're doing this episode uh, actually right after we recorded the Tom Petty one, because we've got some scheduling stuff that would screw us up next week. And uh, and so, you know, we talked a lot about Listen to Her Heart in that episode and the drum groove that Steve Petrenko played in our theme music in the intro is kind of that same groove. <laughs> it really, really is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I just noticed that as we were listening wait, wait, wait. to it. Tap it out. That's yeah. it. It's just, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Anyway, there you go. We won't do two shows about Tom Petty, but I, I just had to, you know, had it on the mind. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot, I've had a lot going on. You've had a lot going on. I, um, I wanted to, I mentioned this in the last episode. I wanted to talk about, I saw yes last night and now there's two bands touring as yes. These days, there's the, the, uh, Steve Howe, Jeff Downs and company thing touring, uh, that that has been called yes for a long time. And then there's what previously was called Anderson Rabin Wakeman, which now after their rock and roll hall of fame induction, they are also calling yes. So everybody's calling their bands. Yes. They're just distinguishing them by, by what members are in it. And, and is, uh, is there anything that you can, I don't know the story about this. Like oh. why, why doesn't, why doesn't Steve Howe want to play with yes? So I don't, yeah, I don't know like the, the, the gritty details, uh, but the, they, they, they've, they've always had their ups and downs in, in terms of their personal relationship. They, they both speak at least publicly. And I think they, they mean it. They speak very highly of one another musically. Uh, it, it, and that's not surprising. I mean, they created some amazing stuff together that they're both still out there, you, you know, kind of playing and they played together for the rock and roll hall of fame. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that'll work, but, um, uh, it, but, you know, but, but they're not touring that way now. Um, and, uh, you know, that's fine. But um, vocally, I I think there's one of those lineups that blows the other away. And that's the one that I saw last night because Steve Howe can't sing. He he just shouldn't be out there singing, um, especially not yes songs. But in fact, very few people should be out there singing yes songs because they're they're not. They're yeah. not your, they're not your typical tunes and the vocals for me with yes are a huge, uh, huge part of yes. You know, I mean, they're, they're crazy instrumentation and they're, you know, all of that stuff is important, but, um, seeing the, so what I saw was the Anderson Rabin Wakeman version of yes. And vocals were astounding. John Anderson's voice sounds the best I've ever heard him live. It's and crazy. the same with Trevor Rabin. I think John Anderson's got to be in his seventies. Um, and, and uh, so Wakeman doesn't sing, which I think is probably, you know, good. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't heard him sing, but I would assume if he could sing, then we would have heard him. So how many, how many people are, are in this band? Five. So they've got a drummer and a bass player. I can't remember the drummer's name. He looked just like Steve Smith from, uh, from journey. And then the bass player is Lee Pomeroy, who's been playing with him for a while. And, and they, and he can actually the, both the drummer and the bass player sang uh, harmonies with these, you know, with, with Raven and Wakeman, uh, sorry, with Raven and Anderson. And um, ah, God, it sounded so good. I mean, the sound was sort of weird for the, it's like, I don't get why in this day and age, I do get it actually why concert sound is still has to go through that, that, that first two songs of morphing it's because rooms sound different with people in them, uh, I suppose. But, uh, but once they got that straightened out and even through that, the vocals were crystal clear and just, I mean, just the, like the harmonies between all four of them and especially between, uh, well, actually, yeah, really between all four of them, a lot of the harmonies were sung by Lee Pomeroy, the bass player, like all those Chris Squire harmonies. He just, yeah. he just filled all those in. 
How yeah. many voices on I've seen all good people? Is that three or four? I think it's four. Yeah. Yeah, I think Steve Howe sang on a bunch of that stuff. Um, because I remember seeing him sing, you know, when I would go see him, but but he never had like you never had to hear him alone. He just filled in notes, you know, and that was fine. Like, okay, yeah, that note in the chord is yours. But, you know, we're going to keep you down in the mix. Like, we don't need to hear your tone. We just need yeah. that note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it was, I mean, it was really, I, the, the show was fantastic. They um, they played a mix of, you know, I mean, it's all old stuff now. But they played a mix of sort of the pre rabin stuff. Uh, they played like Awakening and uh, Heart of the Sunrise and Perpetual Change, things like that. And then they played a lot of the Rabin stuff, too. So you got your you know, um, changes, cinema, hold on rhythm of love, owner of a lonely heart, that kind of thing. And, uh, that stuff was actually to me, the highlight of the, the show. Although, although, uh, heart of the sunrise was, was quite good too, but, but the Rabin stuff, especially rhythm of love really blew me away live. Mm. Uh, and I'd seen it before, you know, but it's been 20 years or 25 years or something, but, um, like the, those guys, it was, it was a really well done show. Um, and Have you in, played a lot of yes in your life. No, very, very little. In fact, it's hard. Talk about enough guys that can do yeah. instrument that can handle all that stuff. You can't. Well, yeah. First of all, you need a band that can play it. And then you need somebody that can sing it. It's, yeah, it's like, really good luck. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. Girl. It basically, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. I jammed on, on roundabout with some friends. Um, but otherwise, no. You know, it's like it like, how are you going to deliver that stuff? It's hard. Yeah. It, but it was interesting. You know, um, this is the music geek in me. But as I was watching the show last night, the kind of the older yes stuff is that it, the harmonies are are arranged in that very classic Bach way where the the melody is, you know, the highest note that you hear. And then all the stuff that they wrote with Trevor Rabin, because he's a fantastic lead singer in his own right. Yeah. It turns that around and does it in kind of the more traditional rock and roll way where the 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 lead note is t- tends to be lower. And then you've got harmonies above it, which um, I never really thought about before. I don't know. It, that's neither here nor there. But it was just interesting. Like, oh, that's why. I mean, Steve Howe is a classical is, you know, classically trained guitar player. Um, Trevor Rabin's like a you know speed demon monster kind yeah. of guy and so he and Wakeman work well together and when I saw him on the union tour when they had like every member of yes on stage t- simultaneously two drummers two keyboard players two guitar players um seeing the two of them together was like oh this this needs to happen more <laughs> often like this is cool <laughs> yeah 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 but but you know some I mean Raven's not that classical guy he can play it but it it you can tell that it's not like the, it's not the stuff he would write and so it comes across as him covering somebody else's parts, which is, of course, exactly what he's doing. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was um, that was a good show. It was, you know, the crowd was weird, but it's a yes concert. I mean, yeah, I, I think <laughs> yes was normal. either the first, the first or second concert I ever saw. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was the going for the one tour. And it was yeah. awesome. And uh, yes, is just in, like for cover bands it's beyond the grasp of most unless you, and, and again you what you really need is you need everybody who loves yes to play in that like it's you don't, the only ca- way. You, don't yeah. you don't casually get into yes right nope no nope. nobody does i mean everybody knows roundabout but and and yeah. owner of a lonely heart and and yeah. that's representative of of you know two very very classic eras of yes but it, the catalog goes way deeper than that yeah yeah yeah. If you could play one yes song for fun, what would be your ultimate? You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that I'd have one. That's an interesting question. It might actually be "Heart of the Sunrise." Um, that's a that's a fun one to play. I've played that on the drums quite a bit. Yeah, uh, but all good people is also like fantastic. It's a great. But that's time. actually that's like for my. I wish my uh, acoustic madness, my trio played that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's that's a folk song. Yeah, it, it totally is. And that's that's reachable for right. s- some cover bands. Yes, it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> some, some mortal cover band. Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine would be a Siberian Katru. If I was really going to cut oh, loose yeah. and just be able to just 
covers so much time, so much tonality on the guitar, so many interesting riffs that that would. Oh yeah, sure. no, that's see. Th- now you make me think. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yep, yep. Or if you ha- again, it, it has to be the right lineup, and. and And I don't know, like, yes, is not one of those. I've never covered yes stuff, really. And I've I've so to me, the canonical versions or like the versions that I think of when I think of yes tunes are the ones that they did. Right. Because you'd never hear anybody really cover these tunes. And so I was going to say, you know, Starship Trooper would be a great song to cover. But I don't know. Like it might it might ruin it for me. Right. Because like the way they put that together and I mean, the whole experience of it, like, yeah, like maybe it should just stay as it is. That's okay. Yeah. So Joe Bonamassa has been covering Starship Trooper in his shows, which is or I don't know if he is currently on his news sure. tour. Yeah. But when I saw him, he definitely gave us a little bit of that. And it was it was mind blowing. It's just so cool. Wow. That's very cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's cool. So um, I'm going through a little bit of a weird thing here. I'm I'm not available to my band for the next couple of weeks. And this is all leading up to my daughter's wedding in a couple of weeks. Is and, your band uh, playing at your daughter's wedding? Well, they are. And, and I was given special dispensation to, to sit in on three songs and was formally warned by the boss, my wife, that uh, don't even think about, you know, getting into it too much and <laughs> wanting to wanting right. to stay up there. Four, so, four is not on the list. That's right. Four is not on the list. So um, so my band is subbing me out. So my buddy Steve, who I, you know, in Acoustic Madness with, you know, great musician, you know, a great rock and roll musician. He's taken he's Paul. He came over. I gave him a half hour of how to be Paul, but really he's does the homework himself. Sure. They're, they're playing a, a gig, which is essentially their rehearsal this Saturday night. I think they have one other rehearsal that they're trying to get together, but it is so weird to watch my band do stuff without me. Like I literally, I, I, I told Nick, I'm, I'm turning the keys over to you for a couple of weeks. Sure. He said, he promised he'd, he'd run it through the car wash before he returned it to me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And, the uh, weirdest it, part is going to be you watching your band at your daughter's wedding. I'm mostly really looking forward to that because I'm, you know, I'm in the moment for my daughter's wedding of and course. I'm really enjoying it. And all my buddies are there playing music for it. So yep. I don't think I'll have that. I mean, it's different. Like if I, oh, was I think, to, I think you'll have it, dude. Really? Yeah. You're it's a different total, than like you're if a total I would control freak. Hand. I mean, <laughs> right. This is your band you've had for 18 years. Is that right? 18 years. Right. Yep. So like, you know, there's no way. I, I mean, I hope it's not weird for you, but there's no way you're not going to be <laughs> thinking about like if I if it was. Let me let me stop projecting. If it were me, I'd be listening at least, you know, kind of half an ear paying attention and thinking about either all the things that they're doing wrong or all the things that, oh, we should do that differently or we should do this. Yeah. Like, the, you know, there's like it would I I I, I it would be great to be able to detach the way you, you say you're going to detach. And I hope that can happen. But I think I'll be able to at the wedding. It's, it's like, it, like if, if I w- was in a cast or something and physically could not play and, and had to watch them go on without me, I think that would make me crazy. Oh, to- but yes, totally. My headspace right now is I'm, you know, having a great day with my family and my buddies right. are there, you know, making music for us. I'm kind yep. of in that. I'm yep. prepared to love every part of this, but Right now, as I see the Slack messages flying back and forth in terms of their preparation and, the, and uh, they're playing a gig and they're going to, you know, they worked a bunch of petty music in to pay tribute to petty is killing me not to do that. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that they're doing it. I mean, I, they, they need to do it. But, um, you know, it's just funny. Uh, it's it's hard for a musician to watch other musicians anyway. Uh, uh, totally. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, let's stop beating around the bush as right. much as you want to go out and support your scene. Oh, this is a good thing. As much as you, you know, want to see what other people are doing when you're a musician, you're you always got one eye to checking out the competition. Right. I, I, I so that is certainly true for me. I, I know it's true for you and I know it's true for a lot of people, but I, I truly have experienced some folks who are really just happy that other people are playing like they, they, this is not a universal thing. And it's, it's foreign to me how someone's brain can get into that mode. I, I but it's I'm not either envious or. of it. It's right. not black or white. You no, can no, be no. both. I, I get that. But there's some people that just don't have that, that competitive edge to uh, when they watch music. Yeah. Hard to imagine. That's not any of the people here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, I, I can, I, I can, uh, I can separate it when I go see, you know, like a touring band, like a pro band. But when I go, when I go see, you know, I want my friends to do well, but you're always kind of listening with one line. You, like you said, you know, Oh, we should do that. Or yep. oh, we, and you know, you, you're fighting. I've had the whole run of emotions where like, Oh my God, these guys are way better than us. Right. Yes. To, yes. to, you know, Oh my God, we're way better than these guys. Right. Oh. So, and you know, the, the, the circumstance often, often depicts that. Like if you're in a, in a place where the crowd is going crazy and everything's grooving, you, you know, a band sounds pretty good when they're going over like that. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. when a band's not going over and it's stillness in a room or they didn't draw anybody, then you're like, Oh, all right. You know, I, I, I know we got one leg up on this band at this time, yep. but I think, I think I told you Springsteen has a good song called where the bands are, where, where, I do like to be amongst my friends who are bands. I never, ever care about being brought up, you know, to sit in or anything like sure. that. Yeah. I do sure. like that. I do like that. There's a vibrant scene and I'm, you know, somewhere in the pecking order of that scene is kind of a, kind of a fun thing for my personal identity. Yep. Right. And so I want my friends bands to do well, no, <laughs> no, not too well. <laughs> <laughs> See, there it is. Yep. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. We're just being honest here. It's what we We're do. Just being honest. That's it. But uh, you know, I I'm smart enough to know that a vibrant scene lifts all boats. Oh, and totally. So, you know, yeah. if people are demanding music, cause there's a lot of music out there, that means that there's more opportunities and that's a good thing. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm humble enough to know that, uh, that, uh, someone else's success doesn't necessarily mean my demise, but, uh, uh, you know, you, you just, you do, you just, Think about, I want people to love my band. I want people to love what we do. And, so, you know, I think any self-respecting musician would be like that. I, I, I can't, I can understand a lack of competitiveness, but even if you go to a show and a band's doing well and you're inspired and you want to bring your band out to touch people, affect people in that way, that's a form of competitiveness, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. Sure. Yeah, sure. So anyhow, that's where my head is right now is uh, my band's playing the wedding. We're going to have a good time. My family's going to have a good time. I'm going to get up and get three minutes of of uh, of uh, playing for my daughter and playing for, you know, my new family and and, uh, and our guests. And I'm really excited about that. And uh, and we move on. But it is weird. Like I said, watching those guys conduct go on with business without me and Nick's doing a great job. I mean, he's organizing rehearsals and you know, he's on top of guys to get stuff done. He's got, he said he has some special stuff planned that he wants to do. He's taking it really to heart. Cool. And so, you know, it is really cool. So yeah, in that good. way, I feel very rewarded that, you know, my guys, you know, they want to do good by me. Not that I would expect anything less. I mean, over time we've played our sax players wedding. We've played Nick's daughter's wedding. Um, you know, we've played a lot of events relative to the families of the band and the band always gets up for them. And I think that's part of the family vibe, the brotherhood vibe that our band has created over time. But, um, you know, being the recipient of it is a kind of a beautiful and humbling thing. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. How about you play any music lately? I have played so much music since our last conversation about playing music. It's ridiculous. I had last week, I had, um, I had two things happening simultaneously, two shows that almost were like intertwined in terms of rehearsing and, and all of that. In fact, I had three drum sets set up in three different places. Um, at one point last week, because we did madhouse, the Beatles madhouse that, that, I mentioned we were working on and then basically with the same cast and crew with some, a few changes, we were also simultaneously doing a reprise of the, this theater show we did called spring awakening. Um, we did it in one town here called Portsmouth and in a theater at another town uh, down in Newburyport wanted a, us to, to bring it there. So they, they basically paid us to, you know, mount the show there. Uh, which was interesting, it, it, you know, when you do a, a, a theater show, you, you kind of, you go through this, there's this arc of the story, right. That you sort of live where you, you start rehearsing and you go through tech week, which is, you know, intense cause you're playing every day. And for a one weekend run that doesn't stop until it's just over. Right. So it's this intense thing. You go through rehearsing the show multiple times, you know, days in a row. 
then suddenly you're playing it in front of a live audience and you're still morphing it, right? It's never, it's never finished. There's always a little, Hey, on this, should you try this or whatever? And, uh, and then it's over and it's always good when it's over, but you know, you, you kind of put a button on it and you're like, all right, we did it. Uh, this was great. You know, we, we got, you know, X number of good performances out of however many we did. And they're, you know, I mean, they're all relatively good, but you know, you, you have the ones that stand out and you're like, all right, cool. We finished the run. Well, all of that. And you sort of put it in a box and it's, and it's done. And to have, because they wanted it reprised so shortly after we had just, I mean, we just finished this run over the summer. So all the same people, most of the same people were available to do it. And, and so it wasn't like we were remounting it. It was like we were resuming it. And that part was a little weird because it was like, oh, you know, like we're not as rehearsed as we were. We know we're all going to come into this thinking we've got this because we did have it the last time we tried it, whatever, five weeks ago or something. It was, it was a weird amount of time between being like finishing it and thinking we were finished. And then all of a sudden, Oh, we're going to do it again. And it wasn't as perfect. It was fine, but it was different. It was a different theater. This theater is not really used to doing musicals. So there was some, you know, interesting sound problems to solve and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it all worked out, but it, it was kind of weird doing it again so soon. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it almost be, I, I think that the best thing I could, I could relate it to is, you know, you, you put together your Springsteen show or this petty show that you're doing. Right. And it's meant to be like a, either a one-off or a, a, you know, a thing that exists and then is, is like happens and then it's done. And then finding out three weeks later, Hey, can you come and put on that exact same show over there? Like, oh, huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you knew you were going to do that, right, you knew you were going to put it together and it was going to be this recurring thing, you, your mindset would be very different about it than it, w it would be like, OK, I did it. It's done. I can sort of flush that from my brain and, and go to other stuff. So I don't know. But it was it was interesting. It was an intense week. A lot of playing. Chops are good. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. It wakes you right up, right? Yeah, it totally does. That's and the Beatles, song. the Beatles Madhouse was cool. It was it was Madhouse. So. It was not perfect by any stretch. Um, it, it nor should it have been. Uh, it had its moments of you know the train wobbling on the tracks, like all the madhouses that we do do. Uh, we never really got a full rehearsal in, despite having plenty of time to rehearse. And and so, uh, but it was it it worked. And and you know it was interesting. I, there were a lot of Beatles songs that we played in it that I had never played before. Uh, Magical Mystery Tour being one of them. Mm. And that, I mean, it's an, that's an interesting song to play. And Sergeant Peppers, I had never played how before much, either. How much did you have to woodshed versus how much just kind of flowed out of you? Um, I don't, that's a good question. Uh, Cause you know, Beatles, like few people know Beatles. Yeah. Well, I, I know Beatles. Yes. But there are, there are plenty of people that know Beatles more than me. So I like, I had to learn these songs. It's, it's different knowing the Beatles and listening to them. And, and, and it's true of any band. And then you go to play it. Like if you have to drive the bus now, as opposed to listening to the Beatles drive the bus, uh, the directions are different, you know, <laughs> like you need to know where to go. And, and like a lot of those, those um, transitions that the Beatles had, especially like a magical mystery tour or even like a bungalow bill, like how they turn things around and go from their different sections to one another like that. I had never I'd never really dr dug into because I didn't need to be the one driving the bus uh, when I listen. And, right. and this was not listening, right? It, this is okay. Like somebody's got to pull it together. Paperback writer we played, which I'd never done before. Um, but I probably will do again. That one. Cool song. It's a fun. And it's, it's really not that hard uh, to pull together. So yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was fun. I had a blast. Great baseline. Yes. So many great baselines. And all of this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's good. You know, good, something man. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do don't have enough, up? you know. Right. What yeah. do you got coming up? Uh, I got a couple of weekends off, I think. I can't even tell. It's been uh it's been kind of nuts, but um, but yeah, I think I've got a couple weekends off and then 
And we've got some stuff in October, I think. I don't know. I've got some travel and then we've got a fling fest coming up at the end of October, uh, which will be on the 28th. So that'll be like a Halloween kind of thing. So I've been meaning to ask you these fling fest do. Yeah. Is there rhyme or reason to like you sell tickets in advance or it's only at the door? Both. So is there rhyme or reason? And I know you and uh, you count everything. And so is sales for this one paralleling advanced sales for the past ones? Um, it, it's too early to tell because uh, it's just now October. So we're just starting to really push it. Um, I'm trying to think of sales. I, I actually I don't know where sales are on this one. So uh, what, what's good for that? 200 people. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Somewhere between 150 and 200 is, is typically what those will draw. Yeah. And they're family friendly. That's the point of them is that's the point. families there. You got yeah. it. Yep. And we'll have and, kids band play and yeah. 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 That's really cool. It is. It, it's always a good time. It really, it always works out. How many of them have you done? I think this will be number six might be wow. number seven. Yeah. And um, like, you live in a pretty small town. So is it now part of the fabric of the town that these things happen? I mean, like the thing that we do here, that park dance thing, people talk about it. They put right. it on their calendar. They know it. They know the name of it. Sure. Um, they plan around it often. Our fling fest to that degree of like, this is great. You know, yeah. enjoying music with our kids is awesome. Yeah. There's, people, there's, people prioritize this on their calendars for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, and that was the reason we created it because we knew that we, we had actually experienced it almost by accident. We'd done some gigs for the, the middle school jazz band, actually for some fundraisers they, they had done. And you, you know, it, it, it was never the, the way that those were supposed to always work is that the kids were segregated for the night. The jazz band would play, then the kids would leave and it was just a, an auction and a party for the adults. And they, they had a rock band so that they could, you know, dance and, and whatever. And invariably, the kids would get dropped off earlier than the adults were ready for the um, for the event to end. And so you'd have this moment that would be, you know, maybe 30 to 60 minutes, not quite 60, but, you know, that half hour plus where kids and parents would all just be like loose and having fun and dancing and all that stuff. And it was like and everybody was always like, oh, we got to reschedule it so that that doesn't happen again next year. And we're like, hey, uh is there a reason that you're saying those words? Because that makes a lot of sense. These people are having fun together with their kids. Like when, huh. when else does this happen? And they all yeah. seem to like it. Like we should do that intentionally. And that's where the fling fest idea came from was, was that. Um, that's great. Yeah. Cause it was the best part of it, you know, playing for adults that are just like, you know, wandering around some of them to be up dancing or whatever. And some would be, you know, hanging out. And so as soon as the kids came, everybody wanted to dance and the adults would get up and, and it was great. It was always the best part of the night. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, that's, so that's where it came it's from. Good thing you've done that. It is. Yeah. We, we like, it. it's weird though, because it's, it, it's obviously morphing as, our kids and then therefore, you know, our friends, kids are, are aging out of middle school out and even out of high school. And so we're aware that this thing's going to, it's got a, a limited run in its current form. So we just got to kind of, you know, let it, let it guide it as it morphs is really what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> How about you? You got any, uh, have you had any gigs to, uh, uh, to speak of, of note? <sighs> Well, um, I had, a, I had a good run of acoustic gigs. I played a new wine tasting room. It was kind of fun. And I think it's going to lead to a lot more work. And I think I'm, I'm starting to think about what I'm doing next year. You know, I, the house rockers were, you know, it's kind of an interesting question that you asked. So, so here's, here's my big view of life. The house rockers are about to undergo the drummer auditions, right? You know, that's three weeks in November. We're going to do two per night, three weeks in a row make a call and hopefully December 1st, we go on with our life. And sure. that, that drummer then has a lot of woodshedding to do, get caught up. And then we'll participate with us as we, you know, add hopefully a largely new show for next year. So that's that. Yep. And, um, uh, I don't feel as much of a need to do these solo acoustic shows anymore. So if I have one venue or two venues that I can go do solo stuff in throughout the year, yeah. I'll be pretty happy with that. Although I am, liking this model, like the Springsteen shows that I did, the ticketed Springsteen shows to do that once or twice a year would be really cool. They're cool, you know, because 
they're artistically and business wise, uh, you know, a fun thing to do. I think they're kind of good for my brand to be a guy who goes out on a limb and does that. And that's kind of what I hear from my fellow musicians. Like, sure. it's really cool that you did something different. Yep. Um, you know, Acoustic Madness has got three venues that we have regular gigs throughout the year. So that's kind of cool. And, you know, I, I think I bit off a little bit more than I could chew with the day job life that I had this year. And I want to I want to kind of rein that in a little bit and, you know, make sure I'm never feeling like it's too much. Yeah. So I, I kind of have a plan against all these things. But, you know, it's it's a year where there's going to be some change. Uh, this drummer thing is, you know, it's still we've, we've spent a lot of time talking about it. It's affecting me. And, you know, it's, it's a it's a real intense thing. Yeah. I, I'm as I said last week, you know, talking about. Um, you know, the band bands are organic things. And again, you know, in a three piece band and a five piece band and a, and a 10 piece band, there's a lot of personalities and my band 18 years, many of the guys have been with me the whole time. Most of the guys have been with me a really long time. And uh, when it's, when it's copacetic, it is really the, one of the most, it's one of the most closest rewarding relationships I have in my life. Um, I, I get a sense we're going, this drummer thing is a shared crisis going to bring us to cl- closer together type of thing. That's pot. Yeah, sure. I believe. I that. mean, it's, it, it could go the other way, right? It could oh, be like, yeah. I want this. I want this. You it, know? it could be a shared crisis that drives you apart. But I think, right, I think right, shared right. crisis is, is probably the right realm to put it in. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I get the sense that there's like concern and compassion for ex- each other um, and respect. Um, That's good. I, yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And so in some ways, the change is hard, but um, it may make us a better band in the long run, you know, and it may make us adapt and, you know, may make guys, you know, protect this thing that we've that we've created over the years and and be even more. Not not that anyone even takes it for granted. I don't think people take things for granted when you're in a band. Well, you do. I mean, I I think at some level. Yeah. 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 But it depends on the lens that you put it through. You can you stop and sing as much in it, but I think if someone's in a in a good situation, they carry with them a level of always being grateful for a good situation. Whether they do everything they can to nurture it is kind of a different question. But um, I think in in this case, it's, it's reminding folks that you know a, a band is a fragile organism, and uh, it takes care and feeding, and uh, there's there's upside beyond what most people get to experience if if you care and feed for it well. Sure. And so yeah, so for sure. I, I think that that's a, I get a sense it's kind of where we're going is is. And so I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to even going closer with my bandmates as we get another personality integrated into what we're doing. Yep. Uh, at least I, I, that's my sense as to where it is now. I mean, it was a little bumpy early on. I mean, certainly a lot of opinions about what's, what's best for us. And it took me as a leader a, a while to get my ego out of the freaking way and just realize what everybody is is speaking up about is because they care and it's what they think is best. Right. That it might be different from what I think is best is um, – a little bit besides the point. So I definitely want to spend some gig gab time kind of talking about process. I mean, right now, <clears throat> now. Actually, hang, hang on one second. We're, we're getting a little Skypey. In fact, we've been a little Skypey here. My apologies, folks. I, I was hoping it would get itself better, but we're going to fix this. We'll be right back. All right. I think we've, we've got us here at least momentarily. So Paul, are you with me? I'm here. Okay. Oh, you sound much better. All right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're on it. It's, there's a weird latency thing. So we're going to step all over each other for the remainder of the show, but we'll make it through. So I I think I was just sharing the thought that, you know, the band is starting to, I I sense us through a, through a bit of kind of melancholy, you know, feeling about the change, this family structure that uh, everybody wants to, really appreciate and, you know, make sure that we continue on with what we've on the path that we have. And it, it, that's actually very cool and very heartwarming. And so that's where I hope our band is going to go. But in, in a big sense, House Rockers kind of taking care of business, becoming a, a bit of a new band, you know, with a, a key new player, a little bit of solo stuff. I want to do those ticketed shows on a, on a, on a special basis. And Acoustic Man is just kind of s- serves my soul doing that harmony harmony singing. And, um, so th- that's my plan for the year. If I do a hundred gigs next year, I'll be, I'll be thrilled. If I do more than that, I think I'm probably biting off two more. That's a lot of gigs, man. 
A hundred gigs. Yeah. I did, did 120 last year. Oh. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. All right. So there you go. Yeah. 120 gigs. Wow. That's a lot, man. Yeah. I guess I should add up buddy, how many um, I've done. Think about our buddies. Our, our, yeah. Yeah. It's probably more than I think, especially this year. This show has been a bad influence on me. You know, I, I've been gigging a lot more. <laughs> Which is uh, all right. I'm it's sorry about that. No, it's that's it's, a good thing. I told us if it's 200. No, no kidding. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this because I think it's get things are getting weird again. But um, there we are. Usually I fade that music in, and today I did not. Are you still with me, Paul? I think I am. Oh, uh, be performing, Dave. Always be performing. We got it in. All right, folks. We'll see you next week. Thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> <laughs> 